Hi everybody, it's Heron coming to you from the River Center. And today we're going to talk about shellfish. If you haven't heard of shellfish before or that word before, um, shellfish is just a term for animals that live in the water and they don't have backbones, so they're called invertebrates. So they live in the water without backbones, but have an outside hard shell. Some of them have two shells and we call those bivalves. So they open and close like this. Some of them just have one opening and we call those a univalve and it would be something like a whelk, like this one right here. We're gonna go ahead and get started with a few of the univalves that you can find here locally. Um, it's kind of a fun thing if you learn the different shells, then you'll know which creatures are living in the water just by what washes up on the beach. So the first one we're going to start with is a rather small one. So we'll see if we can see it. It's called an oyster drill and it does have just one opening. It has a pointy top to its shell and it has little waves or sometimes they call them ribs that go along the shell. The oyster drill lives in oyster beds. Um, so that's how it gets its name. It also does drill holes with its tongue into oysters so that it can use those to eat. It'll eat um, barnacles that are in the oyster beds, anything it can drill a little hole in with its tongue. Their tongue is like a little sandpaper so that they can scratch on a shell and make a little hole and then they can eat um, the food that's inside the shell. The next one is similar in size. It's called a periwinkle. And lots of times people find these stuck to the rocks. The things that periwinkles like to eat are the algae that grows on the rocks. So yet they use their tongue to scrape algae that's growing on the rocks and that's how they get their food. They actually are herbivores, which means that they only eat plants. You can tell from comparing the oyster drill to the periwinkle that the periwinkle's shell is smoother. It's got a darker color and it doesn't have as much of a point at the top as the oyster drill does. Another one is a slipper shell and they get their name because um, of the little pocket that's inside there that looks kind of like it could be a little slipper that you could slip your feet into if you have little miniature feet. They're also um, called a limpet, that's the other name for them, and they're a kind of snail that stacks one on top of the other. So if we have a couple shells, you've probably seen these before because they're really common. They can stack on top of each other and then they live this way. For food, they actually filter feed, so they suck water in from um, their surroundings and then they pass it over their gills and they get the food trapped in their gills so that they can eat that way. They have that little shelf on the inside of their shell so that they can have all of their important organs protected by a little extra shell covering. These you find a lot of times just stacked like this and then they're also stuck on a rock or maybe um, they wash up with the waves. So they're really fun to find. They look like little slippers for maybe a mouse or something like that. The next one is a moon snail shell. And I always say this one reminds me of a cinnamon bun because it has that um, swirl that reminds me of what cinnamon buns look like. They are another kind of snail that has a big foot that comes out of the shell and they go around looking for um, other shellfish to eat. So they'll find a clam or a quahog or something buried down in the mud. And then they also have that sandpaper like tongue that will come out and drill a little hole in the back of a shell, usually a surf clam shell. And then they can put their um, mouth inside the shell and eat the food that's inside there. They also make a cool egg case called a sand collar, which is like a little round um, circle collar made out of sand. And they lay their eggs in those. And sometimes you can see them wash up on the beach. And usually I see them in June. So um, we still have time. We could catch a couple of the sand collars that come up that the moon snails lay their eggs into. 
The last one of the univalves or the last two of the univalves that we're gonna talk about are the whelks. Um, we have two different kinds of whelks. The first one is right here and it's called a knobbed whelk. Um, and it gets its name because of the little points that are around the shell. So that's why it's called the knobbed whelk. You can see the opening inside the opening. Usually um, there's kind of an orange color on the inside. Lots of times people will take these and listen in them and they say they can hear the ocean. When they're alive, there's a snail, snail body that lives inside there. They dig around in the sand looking for um, other clams and things, mussels to eat. They um, do have a sandpaper tongue that they use sometimes. They also can um, shove their shell uh, into a snail, uh, into a mussel or something like that to eat and it pries it open a little bit so they could get their mouth in there. They have a mouth that's like a straw that comes out and can go inside. The other kind of whelk that we have around here is the channeled whelk. Um, this is both, these are both really big whelks. They start off pretty small. The channeled whelk has the swirl, but it doesn't have any bumps. Instead, it has like a little channel that goes around. And this one, sometimes you can find them with this fuzzy coating on the outside. And the fuzzy coating is when they're growing a new shell. At first, it has a coating on the outside that usually rubs off as it gets older and gets a little bit more worn. I also have a few of the egg cases from the whelk, and I'll show you how to tell the difference between the two. This first one that I have over here is from the um, channeled whelk, and you can tell the difference between the two egg cases because of the way that the um, egg case comes up to a point. So this one here, it comes up to a little point, so it's a channeled whelk. And then this other one has a flat edge. So that's how you can tell it's from a knobbed whelk. And each one of these little sections will have up to 100 little baby whelk inside before they hatch. I do have a few live whelk that are in our aquariums here at the River Center. So we'll see how they look like with a snail inside. I don't drip too much water. <laughs> so this one here is a knobbed whelk. It has the little bumps, so that's how we can tell. When you look inside the shell, you can see the snail's body inside there. And there's a little um, thing that sometimes I call the trap door because um, the other scientific word is a little difficult for people sometimes, an opera column. So uh, the little trap door there protects it from something that might want to eat it. So, <laughs> And it also shoots water out the end sometimes when it's retreating back into its shell. So this knob whelk, you can see the snail's body is inside there. Um, when they move in, then the water comes shooting out. Um, but it's just water from the tank that they were just in. So this one's the knobbed whelk. I do have a little channeled whelk in here too. And this one, you can see the snail body is out a little bit more. It might start to go back in because we've taken it out of the water. So it starts to try to protect the uh, inside parts of the body by going in. We can see if we can get a close up look at that. So you can see that little trap door. You can see the snail's body. They do have two antennae that um, come out of their um, their head so that they can sense things in the water and feel around for good things to eat. So that part that's coming out is the foot of the snail, the uh, channeled whelk foot that might come out, dripping water everywhere. And you can also see that trap door that covers and protects their body from predators that would like to eat them. Usually for predators, other than humans who actually do eat whelk um, in salad and things like that, um, birds like herring gulls, um, a lot of times we'll find them and then fly really high and drop them down so that the shell will crack and they can get the tasty treat that's inside. Here it's coming out a little bit. So the part that's coming out is the foot 
and the foot goes into the sand so that they can slide around looking for different things to eat. They do also spit out a slime that helps them to move a little bit easier in the sand. So this one now is probably trying to find something to grip onto so that it can move around. It's pretty cool to see that little foot when it comes out. Nice. So that's going to do it for our univalves. I will go ahead and um, grab a tray of the bivalves and we'll start to learn a little bit about those. All right, so we're going to start up with the bivalves that you can find over at the beach. And again, those are the shellfish that have two shells that can open and close. And the very first one I'm going to start with is the Eastern Oyster, which I have a pair of shells right here for the oyster. These like to be um, not right in where the ocean waves are, but further up into the estuary. They have a cut shell on the top and a flatter shell on the bottom. They also have a rough um, outside part of their shell, which you can see right there. Um, so they're a little bit sharp. And also with shellfish, when you look inside, you can see where the muscles attach to the two shells so that they can open and close their shells. So those um, little dark spots right there are where the muscles from the body on the inside of the oyster attach to the shell so they can open and close them. The inside of the oyster shell is much smoother and it's the same uh, material that they use to make their shell on the inside that they use to make pearls. So that's what a lot of people think about with oysters is that they can make nice pearls. Um, usually when they're filtering water in through their gills to catch the food that they eat, which is the plankton that's floating around in the water, every now and then they'll get some sand or something that could get stuck in their soft body. And to stop um, the irritation of that, they spit out the same kind of thing that they use for their shell around the sand or whatever is stuck in their body, and it can make a pearl. And unfortunately, the Eastern oyster makes pearls. They're not the shiny white, pink, all the colors that you see sometimes in the jewelry store. They make a kind of dull color for their pearl. They're usually around three to five inches, but sometimes they can get to be really big, like this shell right here that we found one day. Um, this is the biggest oyster that I've ever seen. I'm sure there's bigger ones out there, but for me, this was the biggest one. And they can grow to be eight or nine inches. You can see the two shells again and the muscles that um, were attaching to the shells. This one was still alive when we found it and we put it in our aquariums for a couple of years. And there was a little um, crab that lived inside here, which was about the size of a little bean or a chickpea. And it spent its time inside the shell picking through um, the plankton and things that the oyster brings into its body when it's trying to eat. So they have food coming in and they have a little protection of these big shells. So it was pretty cool to find one of those. The next one we're going to talk about, lots of people find these and they're really pretty. So um, people are always looking for different kinds of jingle shells. These are called jingle shells. I've heard other people call them mermaid's toenails or fisherman's toenails because if you put it on your fingernail, it looks kind of like a really old, scary looking nail. These are also filter feeders. They eat plankton. Their shells come in different colors. So this one's kind of an orange one. This one's more of a white color. I have one that's yellowish, which you can't tell too much. And then the last one's kind of a gray or black color. So usually you only find the top, top part of the um, jingle shell because the bottom is flat and it usually sticks to rocks. So by the time the shell breaks off, you um, usually it's left over on the rock that it was attached to. 
The next one we're going to learn about is the Bay Scallop, and they have um, a really nice shell with ridges on it. They come in different colors. This one's a darker color. I have one that's really light with a stripe, different pattern on it. And then this one here is kind of an orange brown color. So they come in all different um, patterns and colors, but you can still see that um, wavy shell that lets you know that it's a bay scallop. So the bay scallops live in our estuaries and they're really dependent on eelgrass. So it's important to help protect the eelgrass so that we have lots of bay scallop. When the bay scallop's alive, they have 30 to 40 blue eyes that come out from in between their shell so that they can look around and see if anything's coming to eat them, like maybe a sea star. Um, they only live for about two to three years, so they grow pretty quickly from something teeny tiny and then to this, um, this size scallop in just a few years. The next one after that we're going to talk about is the razor clam, which these like to dig into the mud. This one has um, their two shells still together. So they look kind of like an old razor. So that's how they got their name. They are also very sharp. So you want to be careful not to step on them when you're walking through the mud. Their shape that they have helps them to dig down into the mud so they can quickly get away from something that would like to eat them. They do also um, filter feed, so they open up and they have a neck that comes out so that they can take water in and pass it over their gills so that they can get plankton and things that are floating around in the water. Just pretty neat. The next one we're going to talk about is the quahog. This is a little teeny baby quahog right here. Let's see if we can get a closer look at it. So quahogs start off pretty small. All of these shellfish start off pretty small and they grow new layers of shell as they get more food and get stronger and bigger. The quahog, as it's growing, the shell has kind of a little curve to it. So that's how you can tell it from some of the other um, shellfish that look similar. And if you can see inside the quahog, it has that pretty purple on the shell. And Native Americans used to use quahog um, as part of making their beads for their jewelry. Um, they use them from all kinds of different things. This is a pretty big shell right here of the quahog. And then the pretty purple on the inside. Sometimes the purple on the inside fades. So um, the best way to be able to tell this shell from the next one I'm gonna show you is that little curve that goes off to the side there. That's the way you can tell the difference. So our last one that we're gonna talk about today is the surf clam. And these are the largest of our bivalves that we have around here. And I don't even have a really big one. I've seen ones at the beach that get to be quite big. Um, if you look at this one and compare it to what the quahog looks like, we can see that shape difference. One's um, more of a triangle shape, the surf clam, and then the quahog has that little curve that goes over to the side. Again, if you were able to look on the inside, they look different inside as well. The quahog has that nice purple on the inside, and the surf clam has um, sometimes an orange color like this one because it's a little bit bigger. The younger ones are pretty white on the inside. But the surf clam can live to be 35 years old. That's how it gets to be the largest of our um, bivalves that we have around here. When they're young, they do get um, eaten by other things at the beach. And one of the things you might find sometimes, we were talking about how moon snails and oyster drills and sometimes whelk, they can drill a little hole in a shell. So this is the little hole that I was talking about um, that you can see in some of the surf clams. So this one was eaten by another shellfish. So I hope you enjoyed learning about the shellfish that are over here around our estuary and our bay. And um, we'll be coming to you with more topics so you can learn about things um, that are around in your own backyard. Thank you for watching.